what if I were to tell you that literally tomorrow you could sell out any music hall and even the biggest arenas, the likes of which Queen perform it, but without having any of the influence or generational talent that a legendary band like Queen has? You might think I'm exaggerating, but no. That is the power of the marketing Goliath that is Anime Idols. Dream, Love Live, Idol Master, D4 DJ, the list goes on. These IPs are beloved and they all center around cute girls making music. But behind those cute girls are what is referred to as seiyu, the Japanese word for voice actor, but in this world it means so much more than that. Because the fans of these IPs love these characters and the franchise, they are of course interested in events that the shows like Love Live create. For a music anime or game, what better event to run than a music concert? After all, if you like the anime or game, chances are you'll also like the songs that are in it. So, seeing those songs and more being performed live in front of you is an idea so, so many fans find very appealing. Performing those songs are the seiyu. They're representing both their character and the franchise that they belong to. And by perform I don't mean just simply singing the song, but recreating what their character did in the anime to the smallest detail. The choreography, the timing, even little quirks like a wink, all of these are replicated by the seiyu acting as the avatar of their character. So, now you might be thinking, well, CJ, you're a liar. To handle these big performances and sell out concerts, of course, you have to be super talented and have divine beauty like all the big artists you see in the West. Well, meet Nozomi Suzuhara, otherwise known as Nom. <laughs> A self-admitted, ordinary girl from an unimpressive rural town not even in the mainland of Japan itself, but a small island located to the south of it. She has on many occasions described herself as untalented and pointed out that everyone around her referred to her as a gloomy girl. Athletic? Yeah, right. In sports, the only balls she could catch were ones that were stopped by her face. Stamina? near non-existent. She couldn't even run around the local park without getting exhausted and feeling extreme pain in her feet. Charisma? <laughs> she wished. Then maybe she would actually have some friends to talk about about the things that she enjoyed as opposed to bullies that made fun of her for speaking about it. Coming from a very humble town, she hadn't had the privilege of taking dance lessons or singing lessons, and so she was good at neither. Nor did she have any delusions that she could be good at either. She had nothing she wanted to do and her old mother was even worried about her future. So how did such an average, unimpressive person end up performing in a sold out 50,000 capacity legendary arena that is Tokyo Dome? It's simple really. Anime. One day, when most of her family was out scouting universities for her older sister, a still in middle school non was bored and alone at home. So she does what any early mid 2000s kids does and turns on the TV. Catching a rerun episode of the famous anime series Love Live School Idol Project. She kept watching more episodes and before she knew it she was engrossed in the franchise, inspiring her to check out its other activities and finding out about the live performances. Being a big fan at this point, of course she attended any of the performances she could, and it was at one of these events that the new anime, Love Live Superstars, was announced. A new anime means new characters, and new characters mean that they needed people to voice them. So, with this, it was announced that the opened auditions would be held to select people for the role. This is how these franchises operate. Considering the intention is to put on these big musical performances under such a large brand, you'd think they'd hire proven veterans in the scene like Lissa or Aoi Eri, but no. Because they'd likely have to pay a lot more to work with these more established talents, these franchises almost always hire rookies, and I mean rookies in the truest extent. For most of them, this is probably their first role and they have no prior experience, but this means that the franchise can freely gobble up all their time 
time and schedule them for as many events as they please, as opposed to having to work around the busy schedule of an established talent. So, for the first time in Young Nun's life, she dared to dream. Dream of being on stage, performing in front of tens of thousands, just like the groups that she had watched and idolized. With that innocent wish in hand, she attended the open auditions. Now, what's interesting is on its face, you'd again assume that just like something akin to X Factor, the judges at this audition would be looking for the most talented applicant. But actually, ironically, just like X Factor, traditional talent isn't really the swing factor for these judges. Rather, it's a mix of things. But one of those things that these franchises love doing is providing a zero to hero story arc for the fans to follow. The logic being that fans love people that are relatable. Seeing someone that is not that much different from yourself slowly evolve and unlock their true potential, ultimately becoming the star that you wish you could be is a really satisfying and endearing journey to follow. So even though at the time Non felt like she wouldn't make it, because seemingly everyone in the audition was amazing and dazzling, actually that didn't really put her at a disadvantage at all. In fact, it may have even worked to her advantage. Some time would pass, and Non would learn that she got the role. She had made it, all of her dreams had come true. Yes, that's right, without even performing once yet, without yet getting any better at singing or dancing, she had already made it. Unlike a more traditional startup idol group, the say of these big franchises don't have to suffer through living in poverty while they struggle to fill up small venues and get their group off the ground. Because the fans already love the franchise and its characters, they have so much blind faith in it, meaning from day one you start with that massive fan base and they'll stick around regardless of your own personal talent. It's not even really rooted in sex appeal like a lot of these traditional idol groups are. There is no better example to illustrate that in the group known as My Go from the Bang Dream franchise. My Go is a band as the defining feature of Bang Dream is that all the groups are bands, as opposed to idols like Love Live. But other than that, it's still the same setup, with the Seiyu acting as the avatars for their characters in the band. For My Girl's first three live events, their Seiyu's identities were hidden. You didn't know their names, you didn't really have a good idea of what they looked like, because the venue's lighting was meticulously set up to conceal their faces and there was a translucent sheet obstructing your view of them. You basically didn't even know what kind of music they make, as by the time of their first event, they had literally only released one song. All you knew was the design of the characters, the names of said characters, and the fact that they belonged to the Bang Dream franchise. Given this complete void of information, any other utterly unknown group like this would struggle to sell 10 tickets in even the smallest of venues. Did that happen to my go? <laughs> of course not! All three of their live events were completely sold out because it being a part of Bang Dream is all the fans need to know. After the Seiyu identities were revealed, interviews were released with them. In these interviews, it was even stated that most of say you either didn't have any experience playing the instrument they were responsible for or had very little experience from a club they participated in during school. Meaning for the most part, this was their first serious experience trying to learn and perform these instruments, making their skill level that akin to an amateur performer. And yet here those amateurs are performing at the very same arena that Billie Eilish did in one of her world tours. It's crazy, but it's reality. How powerful these franchises are is truly fascinating. And yes, the popularity isn't entirely just because of the brand. The Seiyu themselves can be quite skilled and develop their own fans through promotional activities they do like challenge live streams, where like a YouTuber, they make content and through that content, you come to like their personalities. But that being said, as proven with groups like My Go, the brand does still drive the majority of that audience. If you're still unconvinced, you can just look at the amount of streams even the most talented say you have when they release their own solo music projects, versus the amount of streams they get when they release music as part of one of these franchises. They can truly take just about anyone and make them into a star that millions will adore, giving birth to what I think is the new aspiration of the young 
young dreamers of tomorrow, like Non. Before, if young girls like her had dreams and fantasies of being a star performer, putting on events in front of thousands, most likely they'd get scouted by some predatory idol agency. Since these dreamers, like Non, don't usually have solid prior experience seriously learning performing or music, these small indie idol projects are usually doomed from the get-go. But these agencies know that it was never about the quality of the performance, it's about commodifying the looks of these innocent, naive young girls and using them to exploit as much money out of susceptible, usually male members of the public as possible, taking in most of that money for themselves and giving these naive dreamers the bare minimum to ensure that their labor isn't classified as straight up slavery. Then, when that hellish reality eventually consumes them and they realize that this dream is actually a horrifying nightmare, the agency will just simply disregard them and move on to the next naive young dreamer. This predatory cycle that lies in the rotten foundation of the idol industry is well known and well documented, a hellscape that would seemingly never end. However, now with the emergence of these anime franchises putting on these live performances with their own made groups, perhaps that tide is slowly shifting. Now, for the first time in decades, you have what I think is a far less exploitative alternative. These young dreamers like Non grew up watching anime with these big musical performances, get inspired to go watch the actual musical performances done by these franchises and end up with dreams of their own. But instead of applying for these predatory idol agencies, they can apply for these anime franchises, where as I have demonstrated, the barrier of entry also isn't that high. Should they make it in, they are paid seemingly pretty well for their work in the anime itself and the performances they put on outside of it. That young dreamer turns their fantasy into reality, and despite their lack of performing experience, as opposed to exploiting susceptible young males, instead you offer them an actual good experience, where they get to enjoy an anime that they love and eventually also watch great performances when the seiyu eventually grow into their new roles and level up their technical skills. Yes, of course the franchise is doing this so they can make money and sell merchandise. Yes, of course not everybody can join these franchises as there are limited spots, but this is about as close to a win-win situation as you'll get in real life, and I think we can all agree it's a much brighter prospect than the bleak abyss that is most newcomer idol careers. Hopefully we can move towards a future where there are more of these successful anime groups and less of these slimy idol agency. So yeah, as I said, tomorrow you could sell out legendary readers the likes of which Queen would perform in. You just have to be a Japanese anime loving girl. Simple.